The need to strengthen local governance has again been stressed for even distribution of dividends of democracy across board, especially to the grassroots. This formed the theme for this year's study to add of participants of the Senior Executive Course 44 2022 of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru Jos, strengthening local governance in Nigeria, challenges, options, and opportunities. The group seven participants who were in Ogun State paid court a visit to some of the primary rulers in the state, as well as local government council for policy research, dialogue, and understanding of some of the challenges faced in their governance. Elizabeth Esso reports. The group seven of the participants of Senior Executive Course 44, 2022, of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru, JOS, on their study to Ogun State, led by its Director General, Professor Ayo Motayo, paid a courtesy visit to the State Governor's Office, where the Deputy Governor, Engineer Noimot Salako Yedele, received them at the Governor's Office Executive Chamber after which the State Commissioner for Information and Strategy briefed participants on the achievements of the present administration in the state. For me, the Lagos Ibano Way uh, land, the Commission, Transit Commission, passes through, for the bulk of that green line, passes through Ogun State. Now, we want to tap into that by linking the, uh, having our own green lines that will link Though we are the middle one and not to bad to inter in inter and there so that our people can also have transport themselves and their goods through rail to the major market. The group led by the Director General of the Institute proceeded to the policies of the Alaki Empowerment Ruler of Egba Land, Oba Michael Adedosware Mukbadebo, and the Olu of Ilaro Empowerment Ruler of Yewa Land, Oba Kende Gbadewole Olubele, as well as the Yewa South Local Government Council to interact with the chairman and local government officials of the council on some of their challenges in local government administration. The monarchs raised issues bordered on local government autonomy and inclusion of traditional rulers in local government administration for effective and visible development at the grassroots. Those who have subjects to discuss at your various groups and syndicates, Nigerian problems, by the time you are leaving lips, Ability to gather around yourselves as soon as you get back to educate many people about the need for Nigeria to remain a great country. Uh, maybe uh, most of this local government uh, administration, especially as chairman, immediately they are spawning. Maybe you have to, uh, you have to report to uh, in just uh, so that you can, uh, they can do a kind of orientation course. In their different speeches are the places visited. The Director General, Professor Ayo Motayo, and the Directing Staff, Brigadier General Wowo Dutsima Nasiru, while speaking on the theme for this year's study tour, strengthening local governance in Nigeria, challenges, options, and opportunities, noted that if local government administration is properly empowered, development will be adequately enjoyed by those at the grassroots towards economic development. Before we choose any state for study, we have to be sure that the state gives us the best opportunity to look at the problems that we're about to solve critically. And of course, Ogo State qualifies eminently as one of the states that we can benefit from in terms of looking at local governors. What was the request by Mr. President? He said that go and look at how we can strengthen local governance in Nigeria. Go and study what are the challenges in local governance. What are the options? What are the options? Study them very, very well. And let us look at what are the opportunities we can explore to make it better. The study tour to Ogun State scheduled for six days will take participants across the three senatorial districts on a tour of all government projects in some of the local government areas. Elizabeth Esson, OGTV News. 
The 45-kilometer Abiyokuta OGTV Ajeba Road construction has commenced with the clearing of right-of-ways, demolition of obstructing structures, and sensitizing the people and drivers along the axis to be cautious of construction signs. Bumi Adigun spoke with contractors standing the site who said the time frame for their work is two years. His report. A sigh of relief is finally here. The abandoned road from Buri, which was stopped at few meters after the Kenta housing estate, Abelkuta, is now receiving attention. The road construction, according to the contractor handling this project, will begin from where it was stopped till it gets to Ajebo, linking Lagos Ibad Expressway to the left and Ijebu Odeekpara to the right. When you look at this road from uh, Idiaba, uh, the state government have dualized it. Where they stopped uh, at the sawmill area, that is our change, 0 plus 0, 0. We are starting from there and dualize it up to where you are having your proposed uh, medical university. That is 10 kilometers. We are to do 10 kilometer dualization and the remaining one up to Lagos Ibada Expressway is going to be a single carriageway. The contractor also spoke about the format the road will take and what the people plying the road should expect. The same design they are having on every truncate road of federal government of Nigeria. You know, I told you we have the design. The design, already, we already studied the pavement. They have done the pavement evaluation. They know the load bearing capacity of this road. Uh, they have done the traffic uh, uh, counting and traffic analysis. They know that, okay, this road, there is a lot of heavy trucks on this road. They have looked at the type of soil you have. They have done the geotechnical, they have done everything that is necessary. And they now come up with the design. And with the design, whatever be the load, impacted on this road is going to survive it. On those houses marked for the right of way, the contractor said the Ministry of Works and Housing with the state government will sort that out. The houses, the places mark if it is under the, if it is not on the alignment of federal government, then they will, the federal government and the state government will have the meeting together. They will be duly compensated. But if it is on the right of way, uh, the government is going to decide on that. On a visit to the Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure in Ogo State, Engineer Ade Akinsoya explained how the construction of the road was conceptualized. The SSLC called me. I think he had a meeting with the, uh, the, the minister. I said, OK, the, that's a federal road, by the way. So he said, this road is going to be done that we need our help to be able to help them secure the yard for them. And, but the key thing there is, it's a federal road. The federal law says the requirement from the center line of the road, the, either left or right, is 45.72. Roughly, say, say roughly 45 meters. Anything within that is you know, straight of way. The road, about 45 kilometers, will be completed in two years. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. Motorists and commuters alike can now heave a sigh of relief as the barricades mounted by protesting students on Lagos Shagamu Binin Expressway have been evacuated by combined efforts of the security operatives. The sector commander, Federal Road Safety Commission, Ogun State, Hamed Umar, this is known while well, speaking with our reporter, Fawora Adisawu. He said the protesters, too, have been dispersed. The sector commander identified the students of Tai Shulari University of Education, Ijebudi, as those behind the disruption of free flow of traffic. Students protesting against the insistent as to strike blocks the Ijebu the Ore Expressway. But uh, thank God, with the innovation of security agencies, 
uh, the protest was called off peacefully. There wasn't any disruption of, you know, uh, peace, except that they disrupted the flow of traffic. The motorists became stranded, but as the student now called off the strike, no mercy has since been restored on both sections of the expressway. Now, and the motorists uh, everywhere can feel free to move about on that section of the expressway, and there is no any obstruction. Umar also appealed to the law abiding citizens of Nigeria to embark on the legitimate businesses without further apprehension and delay. The All Progressive Congress, APC, has inaugurated screening committees for State House of Assembly aspirants across the 36 states of the Federation. This is coming about two weeks before the conduct of the party's primary elections, slated for May 30, ahead of the 2023 general elections. The committee, inaugurated by APC Deputy National Chairman, Senator Abubakar Kiari, is in charge of the elections of the ward and state delegates that will elect governorship candidates and the presidential candidate of the party. According to members of the committee, there are over 3,000 aspirants contesting for state House of Assembly seats. Citizens of the Republic of Bere residing in Nogun State are set to honor their governor, Prince Dapo Abiodun, with Per Pikumum, Father and Common, the highest award that can be bestowed on anyone with a significant contribution to the group. In a statement by the president of the group, Mr. Roman Kapo says, Beninese residents in Ogun decided to confer the honor on the governor as a result of his administration's immeasurable and significant contributions to the well-being, security, and support for the people in the state. Kapo, who said the award presentation ceremony is planned to hold on May 20, added that they would like to present it to the governor with pomp that will enable them to exhibit their rich cultural heritage. And still ahead, President Buhari approves appointment of Brigadier General Muhammad Fada as new NYSC Director General for Research and Development. President Muhammad Buhari disclosed this while receiving in audience the Secretary General of the International Civil Aviation Organization, Mr. Jun Kalu Salaza. The President said the institution would also cater for the manpower challenges of the aviation sector. President Buhari added that the government has adopted a civil aviation policy which is centered on liberalization and public-private partnership initiative, resulting in huge investment in the nation's airport infrastructure and services. The Secretary General of ICAO, in his address, appreciated the leadership role Nigeria plays in civil aviation in Africa, describing the country's record as one of the most impressive in the world. He added that his organization also recognized the excellent work of the Buhari administration to maintain high standards in line with international best practices. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of Brigadier General Muhammad Fada as the new Director General of the National Youth Service Corps. General Fada from Yobe State will take over from Major General Shuaib Ibrahim, who spent two tenures. He was in NYSC on Tuesday and has been briefed by the outgoing Director General. General Ibrahim, a native of Nasarawa local government area in Nasarawa State, is an associate professor of history and world studies at the Nigerian Defense Academy. He assumed office in May 2019, and prior to his appointment as the 18th DG of NYSC, he was the registrar, Nigerian Army University, Bu, Borno State. Amina Muhammad, the United Nations Deputy Secretary General, has called for justice following the killing of Deborah in Sokoto over blasphemy. Muhammad spoke out via an official Twitter page on Tuesday, stating that religions should not be misinterpreted to preach violence. Yakubu, a second year student of the Shewu Shagari College of Education, Sokoto, was lynched on the school premises on Thursday after classmates accused her of blasphemy. On Monday, the Sokoto Police Command arranged two suspects, Bill Yaminu Aliyu and Aminu Ukonji, 
before a chief magistrate court in the state for their alleged participation in the crime. The suspects pleaded not guilty to the charges, while the defense counsel, Professor Mansour Ibrahim, applied for their bill on liberal terms, citing constitutional provisions and sections of the administration of criminal law, justice law. The trial judge reserved the ruling on the bail application and ordered the accused to be remanded at a correctional center. The death toll in a gas explosion that occurred in Kano State on Tuesday has increased to nine. The Federal Minister of Humanitarian Affairs made this known when announcing the arrival of the Director General of the National Emergency Agency, Mustafa Abib Ahmed, at the scene of the incident. Meanwhile, the Kano State Government has clarified that the early Tuesday morning explosion in Sabangari area did not occur in a school. The State Commissioner for Information, Mohamed Garaba, said the incident happened at an animal feed store opposite the school along Abba Road, Savangari area of Fage local government. He said while the cause of the explosion and the damage was yet to be officially ascertained, an investigation has since commenced to determine the cause, impact and measures to be taken. Garaba called on the people in the state, particularly those living in the area where the incident occurred to remain calm while the government, in collaboration with relevant agencies, are working on the matter. The commissioner assured residents that governments will keep the public abreast of any development. Meanwhile, the police on Tuesday said an explosion that rocked Kano City was triggered by gas cylinder and not a bomb. According to the police chief, four persons have been confirmed dead. He said no school children were among the dead. He confirmed that rescue operations were still ongoing as bulldozers were being expected to clear the rubble. Diku appealed, added that the police, in collaboration with other security agencies, was also investigating what led to the gas cylinder explosion. The blast, which occurred on Tuesday, affected some buildings and left several injured, including school children. According to the State Commissioner for Information, Mohamed Garaba, the incident happened at an animal feed store opposite the school along Abba Road, Savangari area of Fage, local government. The commission assured that governments will keep the public abreast on any development and want people to desist from spreading unsubstantiated news. So education, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has debunked reports of error in the scoring of candidates in the just concluded 2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME. The board warned the public, especially candidates of the last UTME, to be wary of girl and other unsafe activities of fosters who were making false claims of errors in the scoring system. Dr. Fabian Benjamin, head public affairs and protocol of the board, made this known in a statement made available to newsmen in Abuja on Tuesday. Benjamin said the board was therefore maintaining for the opt-in time that the UTME was a computer-based test that was scored electronically with no human mediation whatsoever. Health matters now. Every 17th of May is declared World Hypertension Day, and this year's theme is measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. This disease is one of the biggest factors contributing to global health challenge. Odranyo Oriyeni takes a look into the major causes of hypertension and how it can be managed. Theme of this year's World Hypertension Day, measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer, focuses on combating low knowledge and awareness levels globally. Reports have it that estimated number of people with hypertension has increased steadily from 54.6 million in 1990 to 92.3 million in 2000 and 130.2 million in 2010. It is projected to rise to 216.8 million by the year 2030. Cardiac causes of hypertension, so things like a thyroid disease can eventually lead to high blood pressure. But the larger population, it may not lay cost to it. It will just come evolving 
from different pathophysiologic mechanisms. It might be from the vascular caliber changing. And as you age, another things that come with it, genetic and environmental predisposition, then people can develop hypertension. To have a better hypertension is we see it as a silent killer like a silent assassin. So usually a lot of people will come down with stroke, come down with sudden cardiac death, and they will tell us they don't have symptoms. So the fact that you are not having symptoms does not mean you should not go for a regular checkup. But the disease, according to medical practitioners, is very common among the black race and develops over a course of years. According to them, some factors are precursor of hypertension. Hypertension as a black man, or as somebody that God created, is higher as you are aging. That's what we are trying to say. It's not like everybody will have it. Being a black person is a risk factor for hypertension. Mm. Even if, if you, the way to understand that is take a black American and Caucasian, you find that the white American. Hypertension is so much with the black population in America. Even Nigerian, African, Nigerian, African, American, they have very high blood pressure compared to the white populace. They added that hypertension is the major driver of cardiovascular diseases in Africa and it is prevalent among older generations. We want people to stop smoking. We want them to reduce to not taking alcohol if it is possible. We want them to reduce stress, physical, psychological and every other form of stress please just monitor come to the hospital even if you are going to church you believe in god see take your drugs and the fact that you are not having symptoms does not mean you don't have hypertension eating balanced diet working out staying off salty food and having a regular blood pressure checkup they said are a few ways to stay healthy and live longer or do i your ogtv news and last night, Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the World Hypertension Day, which has as theme, measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. Medical experts, including the World Health Organization, Nigerian Medical Association and Nigerian Heart Foundation, have warned that the prevalence of hypertension in the country is on the rise. This, they said, is due to prevailing insecurity and poor socioeconomic conditions. Specifically, Executive Director of Nigerian Heart Foundation, Dr. Kingsley Akinroye, said that the prevalence of hypertension is estimated to be between 30 and 40 percent of Nigeria's over 200 million population, which is in the range of 60 to 80 million Nigerians. He had last year informed that the prevalence of hypertension in the country was as much as 38.1 percent. Dr. Kimroye, who is also a consultant cardiologist, said almost one in three adults suffers from hypertension, while only one third of this figure, about 26.7 million Nigerians, are on treatment. He said a survey by the Nigerian Heart Foundation showed the awareness of hypertension is more in the urban than rural areas and more amongst women than men. World Telecommunication and Information Society Day is celebrated on 17th May of every year. Today is celebrated annually to raise awareness about the opportunities that information and communication technologies, ICT, brings to people and societies at large. In this special report, Sheyi Alao spoke to ICT experts on how Infotech has transformed the world. Yeah, on May 17, World Telecommunication and Information Society Day is celebrated. The day aims at exhibiting the importance of telecommunication and increased awareness of the vital role it plays. The body pioneering this celebration is the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, and this year's theme is Digital Technologies for the Older Person and healthy aging. It's just a day of reckoning that, oh, what, you know, when, we, when we reflect at, okay, oh, what has ICT brought to uh, mankind, we cannot but at least uh, agree with the United Nations, you know, on uh, having a dedicated day to celebrate uh, ICT. The essence of the celebration is, is to create awareness for the people 
to know much about the telecommunication industry and the ICT world. Telecommunication and information technology helps in providing newer, better, and quicker ways for people to interact, network, gain access to information, and has improved every sector of the world economy. The way we've been using information technology was quite different from after the pandemic. What the pandemic has taught everyone is that you don't necessarily need to gather together in a place or be with someone before you can have anything done. So now you have uh, e-commerce sites everywhere. You even have people working remotely. They, base, they stay in a particular country and work for someone else in another country. These are things that are not, have never been in place before the advent of information technology. I can tell you really that it has actually positively impacted the Nigerian economy. Are we talking about the employment opportunities that it has brought, right? I want you to talk of the platform through which ICT drive, that is telecommunication, right? It is so huge. Despite all the benefits of information and communication technology, Experts believe it could become a hazard if not properly checked. In this age of uh, technology, there are some questions that they need to take. And is anybody that needs to take this question? In every family, parents do need to step up. They need to get this awareness as well. The World Telecommunication and Information Society Day was celebrated for the first time in 2005. Sheyi Alao, OGTV News. The British Council has announced the release of £600,000 for UK-Nigeria grant-funded partnerships to support systemic change in 20 institutions and organizations in Nigeria. This came as Nigeria and British government signed a memorandum of understanding on transnational education with the aim of boosting transformational education in the country. Speaking during the presentation of an overview of transnational education in Nigeria by the Niger National Universities Council to a high-powered UK government delegation on higher education and visit to Nigeria, British Council Chief Executive Scott McDonald explained that the partnership was aimed at opening up more opportunities for young Nigerians willing to study in the United Kingdom both virtually and physically. Mr. MacDonald explained that it would also encourage an exchange of educational, scientific and cultural cooperation between Nigeria and the UK and also help to develop professional standards for ministry officials, teachers and school leaders. MacDonald stressed the commitment of the British Council to a long-term investment in the Nigerian education sector as well as its continued growth maintained that the relationship between UK and Nigeria was very important, not forgetting the key role of British Council to that effect. A community and socio-economic advocate, engineer Benga Akiwande, has met with members of APC in Yewa North One State constituency about his aspirations and visions at developing the constituency and the entire Ayeturu community in Yewa North at large. The manifesto held in Ayeturu, Yewa North local government area of Fugin State, was witnessed by members of his community, as well as APC members with much interest to support his aspiration. Atibola Oshomoji reports. <laughs> An All Progressives Congress, APC, Ogun State House of Assembly aspirant from Yewa North 1 State Constituency, Engineer Gbenga Akinwande, has indicated his expression of interest and ready to raise the bar of political representation in Ayetoro axis of the state. Party chairman, executive members, and councillors from different wards in the constituency express their unflinching support as he is ready to represent them. Engineer Benga said he is willing to work hand in hand with the Ogun State Governor to ensure speedy development in Yewa North. My adventure into politics is born out of my genuine love for our community and my desire to use politics as a vice for accelerated development of our Yewa and Algerian community, particularly to try out our people and communities from poverty to economic prosperity. 
The party chairman, Yewa North local government, Chief Adekunle Adioshun, said the aspirant is known to be very determined and reliable in his ambition. Ward chairman, councillors and escorts in attendance delivered their solidarity messages. To continue in this manner to get to the promised land. The aspirant added that elections should not be a do or die affair as he encouraged members of the world to choose wisely. Adebola Oshomoji, OGTV News. Notable individuals have paid glowing tributes to Mr. Dirodola Molewa Kutai, the chairman and chief executive officer of Spectra Industries Limited, on the occasion of his 70th birthday and 30th anniversary of the food processing industry, Spectra Industries Limited. Margaret Okunlola was at the event in Lagos, where dignitaries from all walks of life in attendance described him as a food technologist for excellence, an administrator and exceptional entrepreneur. A report. It was a time to roll out the drums, to celebrate 30 years anniversary of entrepreneurship and service to humanity by Spectra Industries Limited, taking a cue from the name a food brand that rolls out affordable functional food products that is good for the body. The event was an opportunity to celebrate the Chief Executive Officer of the Food Processing Industry, Mr. Durodola Omolewa Kutei. On the occasion of his 70th birthday, experts in food processing, dignitaries from all walks of life gathered to celebrate with the man they described as enigmatic. When you have somebody who has been persistent for four decades and has driven products that have become household uh, items that Nigerians have enjoyed for wellness and satisfaction, I think he's worth celebrating. Spectra have been tried tested and trusted because Mr. Drokute keep on learning. He is an entrepreneur by excellence. More quality products and uh, 30 years is the beginning for us. Family members were not left out of the euphoria of the moment. He has taught me so many things. I look up to him, he's my role model. At home he was present. You would know that he was around and then he was always involved in our lives. He's been a persistent person. He's, he's an incurable optimist. He believes that Nigeria can be good if we all contribute our bit. According to the celebrant, Mr. Drudola Omolewa Kutei, a food technologist, it's been 40 age long years of entrepreneurship. He charged upcoming entrepreneurs to use judiciously every opportunity in their disposal. I studied food science and tech, and I need to let people know the difference between someone who studied food tech and someone who just uh, came along the line, just seen someone doing something and you want to do it. Hmm? So the difference is what I want people to see. You know, if you understand the process, if you actually went through the studies, you will be able to use one machine to make many products. A book titled One Way Ticket, My Uninterrupted Journey from Port to Factory, written by the celebrant as a guide for younger generation, was launched at the event. Margaret Okunlola, OGCV News. Business News with... Dominic Beha is next. Welcome to the business segment of the news. Nigerian and Swiss firms have signed a pact to develop precious metals and artisanal gold mining value chain. On the sideline of the investing in African mining at Cape Town, South Africa, 
Dukia Gold and Precious Metals Refining Nigeria Limited and Filoro Global Trading Switzerland signed a working together agreement to deepen participation in the extractive industry as well as consolidate strategies in the development of programs needed to exploit the expected benefits in the sector. Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olami Leko Adegbite, said the signature was a simple affair, but one with enormous significance. Adegbite described it as a major step towards trading of gold and gold products in Nigeria. Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, Prince Clem Agba, has disclosed that taxation of the digital economy is to raise government's revenue profile by about 15% of the country's gross domestic product by 2025. According to him, the government is making concerted efforts to prioritize expenditure and place emphasis on resource mobilization. Agba disclosed this in his keynote address at the 2022 fourth edition of Punuka Annual Lecture themed taxation of the digital economy, the challenges and prospects for the Nigerian economy. He noted that the federal government has put in place the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative and the Finance Act to mobilize domestic funds necessary for human capital and infrastructure development that were both drivers and enablers of sustainable economic growth and development. Nigeria's energy generation peaked at 3,599 megawatts in the early hours of Tuesday, which is 2.6% lower than the 3,694 megawatts recorded on Sunday and the lowest peak generation in 37 days. This is according to information from the Transmission Company of Nigeria. In the same vein, off-peak generation also declined by 3% to 3,245 megawatts in contrast to 3,346 megawatts recorded during the previous day. The amount of power supplied on Monday by the generating companies represents 98.75% of the total power generated. Nigeria's energy generation has continued to fall below the minimum 105 kilowatts per hour required to record some level of stability in the power supply in the country as Nigerians continue to grapple with epileptic power supply with multiple grid disruptions recorded so far in 2022, causing widespread blackouts across the country. And finally, on the business segment of the news, the dollar exchanged at 600 Naira early on Tuesday at the parallel market, heightening fears of a further devaluation of the nation's currency. The Naira has weakened in the parallel market due to increased speculations, falling external reserves, and low foreign exchange inflows into Africa's biggest oil producer. The country's external reserves fell by $313 million in March, according to figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Politics is also a key factor, as experts see politicians mopping up dollars for election primaries this month. And that's the business segment of the news. Many thanks for watching. And you back to Mojisola for the continuation of the bulletin.